In today's video, I get my hands on a special camera that I never thought I would get to experience. Joined by my good friend Louise Welcome, we drove along the coast to make a video and capture some seascapes of the sunrise. Well, good morning everybody. This morning, Louise Welcome, who's in the background there, and I have come to Eastbourne to photograph the pier. We're not expecting any epic weather conditions, but it's just good to be out the weekend. And this morning is low tide, fresh, cold winter morning. It looks better on the pocket than it does in real life. I know. <laughs> the pocket three makes everything look better than it is in real life, including this. You saying I don't look this good in real no, life? No, no, I pointed at my face, not your <laughs> face. You probably thinking I'm packing light this morning because this is my camera bag. One of the smallest camera bags I've ever seen okay. you have. It's but it's one. not light. I've got okay. a surprise in the bag. I'm gonna wait for the sun to come up a little bit or a bit more light, and then I'm gonna do the big reveal because I've got something special in this camera bag. You're not gonna look at this and think I want one. Okay. Well, you will, but you won't want to buy one. Fair enough. <laughs> and the good thing is, it's not too windy this morning. So even though it is cold, not going to get absolutely battered by the wind. Would be nice to get some starlings here this morning though, because it is still kind of starling season. Are we doing the reveal then? Should we do it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Are you, re are you sure you're ready? I'm gonna make myself a bit of an editing problem here. I might try and make it like a golden glow come from the bag. This is a Fujifilm GFX 100, 100 megapixel medium format digital camera. And that is the world's first tilt shift lens for a medium format digital camera. And you've got it. And I've got it. <laughs> we could take a picture of this and you can just zoom to your heart's content in on the images. The detail is incredible. Uh, I've got to figure out how to use this now. Okay, I suppose I'd better do this a little bit of justice. The thing is, because this lens filter thread size is 105 millimeters, I can't actually add any filters to it. It's kind of a good job that the sun hasn't come up yet because I can, I can actually get some long exposures with some cloud movement in it before the sun comes up. All right, let's get some shots. And my brief experience of using this camera yesterday is that when you jump from, I use full frame going to medium format is apertures, depth of field, all of these things are not exactly the same. You have to kind of upscale them by about 50%. So F11 is kind of equivalent to F16 if you want the same sort of depth of field. Yeah, you just gotta kind of get your head around that. It's not the same as full frame. And as you might expect, I've not got a bag full of different lenses, so today, I am very much shooting on one lens. This is a 30 millimeter medium format, which is equivalent to 24 millimeters. And to make the best of this location, I kind of need an interesting foreground. So I'm hoping that I'm not going to get my footprints in the scene for Louise, uh, but I have to be shooting somewhere here because I can't actually zoom in. But this tilt shift lens allows me to kind of make certain alterations to the composition so if I undo that the height of the tripod at the moment you can see I'm trying to include these these patterns in the sand in my composition and I could lower the camera uh, but with the tilt shift lens you've actually got the option I've made a separate video about this but you can shift the lens up and down because this lens has got lens collar it's actually shifting the camera up and down but what this does is it changes the composition. So now you can see I can lower this so that it's kind of one third of the pier and two thirds of the foreground. And now all of a sudden you can see in the image 
it's making a lot more of a feature of these patterns in the sand. And that's one of the benefits of having a tilt shift lens. You can, you can tweak your composition without changing the height of the camera. Uh, my request for starlings seems to have been heard, um, but they just went straight past the pier inland. So I'm hoping they're going to be back. Once I've given this camera back, I'm going to go back to my um, satisfactory 24 megapixels. Like I said earlier, I'm not expecting anything epic from the conditions this morning. I only have this camera for a short period. So I just thought I need to get out because it's having that sat on the side in my lounge didn't feel right. So even if it was rubbish conditions this morning, I thought I've got an incredible camera. I have to just go out and use it. I'm also gonna share with you some photographs that I took here about two years ago. I came down here with my friend Pablo. He's not been in any of my videos recently because he's actually traveling around the world photographing triathlons and things like that. And we came here, it was absolutely freezing. I didn't film anything, but I did actually get some stunning shots of the pier. Some of them had some starlings around, but it was a lovely clear morning. Sun was coming up behind the pier. I'll let the images do the talking. This is not a camera review. This, I just wanted to see what all the fuss is about having essentially four times the resolution that I currently have on my camera. I am not interested in carrying a camera around this heavy and expensive all the time. This makes me very nervous having this. All right, let's head back to the office and do a bit of pixel peeping to see what all the fuss is about. Okay, I have to admit that having this many megapixels is a joy. I have imported these photographs into Lightroom and I've looked at some of the metadata. These are large files. Uh, for example, this first photograph that you saw me capture in the video, this is a 135 megabyte DNG file. I wouldn't say that Lightroom was struggling with it, but it's definitely slower than I'm used to. Now, this was also included in the video. Once again, this is a wide shot. They're all quite wide because they're all shot on 24 millimeters. And again, it's just loading the preview and you'll see all of a sudden you can read the sign on the pier. It says family amusements, tickets and prizes here. And you can see the time. That time says it was 10 past nine. Now, if I zoom out, you'll notice that it's a tiny, tiny proportion of the photograph. And it's ridiculous. You can't even see that there's a clock here. And then you zoom in and you can read the time. I know I'm getting carried away with the pixels, but this is the benefit. Okay, let's have a look at another photograph of the pier. Now, one thing to note is, I would say that these are very, very good raw files to be working with. Not just the resolution, but I'm talking about the quality, the, uh, the color science, everything that goes with it. So if I go to the develop module in my Lightroom, you'll see that I've done very, very few changes. I think that the raw files that come out of this are really, really nice. Um, so I've, I'm aware that the outside is slightly overexposed and there's a tiny bit of the door reveal which is overexposed, which I think is perfectly acceptable because there is direct sunlight coming in there. But what you'll notice, I've done very little in terms of editing. Um, I've pulled back the highlights and the whites. I pushed up the clarity by four and then I pushed up the saturation a smidge. That's it. I didn't feel like these files needed to be pushed that much because they already look Great. When you go to the pier shot, I've done a bit more editing. Not because of the, the camera as such or the files, it was more to do with the conditions. It was very flat. There was some detail in the sky, but generally it was quite flat. So in this image, I have pushed up the exposure, the mid-tones generally, and then I've added a grad filter over the sky and in the foreground to kind of concentrate the viewer's eyes in the middle of the frame. You can see there's a bit more action happening in the sliders, but still not very much at all. And let's have a look at one more image before we move on. Again, um, these are all shot wide with the 24 millimeter lens. And optically, once this is loaded, you'll see the detail on the clock, the railings, the sign, 
and that is zoomed in. That's just a small portion of the photograph. If you want a detailed review of this camera and this lens, then I'll put a link at the end of this video to Gordon Lang from Camera Labs because that's how I got the camera. He was reviewing it for Fuji and he had it for a couple of weeks. So that is why I got the opportunity to use this camera. And what you'll see in his review is optically, this is incredible. I won't ruin the rest of the video by showing you these because they are coming up, but. Now the camera has gone back to Fuji now and I was quite relieved when I had to give it back um, because the camera and the lens, I think, are about £10,000 combined. Um, are the images worth £10,000 when you compare it to, say, my £2,000 camera? I'm not sure that it's five times better, but I can see why it gets that sort of price tag because this, this is elite camera gear. So if I was full-time architectural photographer, I could see how you might justify this sort of kit because the results are incredible. You could blow these images up gigantic and stand this close to it and still say, that looks good. Not for me right now, maybe one day. Okay, back to the younger me in Eastbourne. I think I'm ch a changed person now that I've tried medium format. In what way? Well, I know that I'm better than you now. <laughs> you always were. It's become obvious. I mean, it makes you an, a, an instant snob. Hold on, let me have a look at the photograph you've just yeah, taken. No, don't look at that. See, when you zoom in on that, it gets revolting. <laughs> I've got that camera. I'm joking, of course. Louise here is a highly commended, award-winning photographer. Shortlisted. Highly commended and commended. Boom! Twice. And we're going to go to one of the train stations to see the exhibition somewhere. Paddington or They're London Bridge? huge. Yeah, we've got to see your work. Am I allowed to grin a lot? On display. Yeah, of course you can. Have a beer. I'll take, I'll take a photo of you in front of your work. Thank with you. The, make sure you bring your smug face. I am that shallow. <laughs> we've got one more stop before we head home. Whilst we're in Eastbourne, there's a really colourful building around the corner. I think it's an art gallery. I've seen loads of photographs of it. I've never actually got a photograph of my own, so literally half a mile away from the pier. And uh, we're at the Towner Gallery. It's funky, isn't it? Okay, we'll explore, explore some angles. I can only shoot 24 mil, so that's me. Okay, whilst I'm here, let me show you the real purpose of a tilt shift lens. So as you can see, spin the camera around and this is set to default position. So if this was a 24 millimeter lens, this is the highest my camera tripod will go to without raising the central column. And you can see what the composition of the building is like. However, ideally, I don't want to chop the top 30% of the building off. So what I do, I can now shift this and include the top of the building. That's the main benefit of one of these lenses. And you can see this strange mechanism. But now I can include the whole building without tilting the camera up and distorting things. So there you go. And if you can walk back and forth, you don't have to go too far because I, I want you in the orange. So as you can see, Louise and I were just walking into one another's shots deliberately. This kind of um, scene, I think, needs a person to really understand the scale because if you look at that door, that door is about three or four metres high. So it's really deceiving on how big this building is. So we're adding a person. I'm shooting at a slowish shutter speed so that there's a bit of blur. And uh, I think pretty happy with that image. Okay, we are done in Eastbourne. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Maybe you've got something out of it. I'm going to put you on the spot. Yes. Which video of yours should my audience go and watch? Oh. What's your favourite video? Slovenia, but it's not necessarily the most popular video. If it's your favourite. Slovenia. I'm going to link Slovenia. to your video to Slovenia. Slovenia. Okay. Oh, just Slovenia. Go and watch that video now. All right. See you next time. Bye.